Welcome to your miracle moment. You're watching The Miracle Report and we're here with a powerful testimony with our dear mom, Sister Marie Claude. And she was healed from arthritis and from heart palpitations. So will you tell us first that you've been suffering with this for a very long time, about 14 years? 14 years, yes, I have. So where was the arthritis? If you can look at my fingers, it's going a bit on the crooked side and I get a lot of pains with it. So, so far, you can feel the pain healing. It's not that, what's the name? And my palpitation is into the river, peace and quiet. I feel very well. So this past week, before you came to tonight's service, you were suffering oh, with heart palpitations. For a, a whole week that I can even have a friend to vouch for that as well. And as well, and the arthritis, was it paining this week or oh. earlier? I, I have that all the time. It's been always painful. I feel better, I do. I felt a different yeah. when I went onto the stage and when my friend also put Should her hands on heart? me and when Pastor put his hands on me, I could feel even now, I can have, I've got goosebumps all over me. Yeah, right, come, walk with me again, come on. Let's walk more faster now. Let's do some real pumping that blood. Let's pump it. Let's pump it, come on, let's go. You Well, you're gonna have, you've already got new blood. you got new blood. Come here. <laughs> Lay hands on the heart right now. Wow. What happened? Tell them what just happened to a heart. Stop oh. burning. Stop burning? Pining. Pining. Pounding. It's not pounding. Are you sure? No. Feel it hard. Press it. Maybe it's pounding. There's a hiding somewhere, the pounds. No, it's no. not. share with us one last thing. How did uh, our ministry uh, just impact you? I know it's your second time with us. Uh, it's that you speak the truth. There's no hidden danger. There's nothing. Yeah. It's, this is what I say. That's what I mean. That's it. Because I have been looking for, for a church for a few, few years now. And everything was just and now I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I've been fed with the word of God. Amen. It's not I, 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 me, me. It's they preach the word of God. They take the words from the Bible, from the word of God. Everything is about God. That's the way I see it. Amen. So we're going to encourage you to come and join us at the Miracle Center. And you can find out more info on our website. You can just visit silvermodley.com and you can see our YouTube channel from there and see our amazing playlist, watch more amazing miracles healing, see all our episodes and also join our global church. So go and explore our website and stay tuned and get ready for a powerful word. Welcome to the program again today. You're watching your Miracle Moment. What a week we are having here in the studio. We are talking about my favorite topic in the whole world, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And I'm so excited. I know that many of you are just taking down notes. You're just enjoying this program. And if you missed any of the episodes, you can go to our YouTube channel, subscribe there for free, watch all the Your Miracle Moment episodes. The ones that you missed this week, you can watch it there for free. I want to uh, continue talking about the Holy Spirit. And yesterday on the program, we spoke about grieving the Holy Spirit. So how does one grieve the Holy Spirit? A scripture that says that we should not, not grieve the Holy Spirit because there's some consequences. We'll come to that in a second. How does one grieve the Holy Spirit? You grieve the Holy Spirit by being stiff-necked, by being stiff-necked. What does it mean being stiff-necked? Well, when the Holy Spirit comes on a person, there's change that must happen to the person. The change sometimes might be very gradual. Some people will, will find it difficult to change, but they will surrender, they will surrender. Others just surrender so quickly and, and the change happens much quicker. But there's some change that comes in a person's life. 
And every day they become more and more like Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, when he comes on a person, you, you become a different person. People come and say, well, what happened to you? You're not the same person. You know, you used to listen to all our dirty jokes and you used to do this and do that. How come you don't do all the stuff anymore? It's because the Holy Spirit has now uh, entered my life. I'm having a relationship, a fellowship with him, and we're drawing closer, and he's drawing me closer to Jesus. Now, that's the good news. But there are some people that say, hold on, this is the way I was born. I'm not going to change. I know God wants to do this. God wants to fill me with his spirit. And, but everything God does and everything the Holy Spirit does, you start to resist it. You want to be the same person you were last year. That is, a, that is what we call stiff necked You resist the Holy Spirit. You grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not talking about somebody who is surrendered to God and is struggling to make those changes. And, but I'm talking about someone who just doesn't want to just doesn't want to. Well, I'll stop sinning when Jesus appears to me and tells me to stop sinning. That is a stiff-necked person who resists the Holy Spirit. And when you resist the Holy Spirit, you don't only grieve the Holy Spirit. Let me say this to you. You don't only grieve the Holy Spirit. We discussed this yesterday. You also grieve God the Father. And God the Father protects the Holy Spirit. There is a, a special type of relationship between the Holy Spirit and God the Father. This is why Jesus had to petition the Father. He literally had to make his case. He had to beg and say, please send the Holy Spirit to the earth. So not just people who comment, who slander those that are filled with the Spirit. You know, if you see somebody drunk in the Spirit, you say, ah, I think that's a demon. Shouldn't, he shouldn't, even, <laughs> shouldn't even open your mouth and talk like that. Uh, you don't know if it's a demon until the person clearly manifest and a demon comes out of them. But if you don't know that for sure, rather not say something that can grieve the Holy Spirit, because what if it is the Holy Spirit on the person? Then you will be actually grieving the Holy Spirit by calling the Holy Spirit a demon. So we should be careful even when we slander other Christians because we are slandering the Holy Spirit in them. When we gossip, it's the same thing. You grieve the Holy Spirit. Anybody who's a gossiper, is a person that grieves the Holy Spirit. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, God the Father turns against you. Isaiah 63.10 says that God became their enemy and he himself fought against them. Why? Because they grieved his Holy Spirit. This is why, you know, you can, you, when, you, when, you, when you speak against the Father, some stuff might happen to you. When you speak against Jesus, he, he'll rebuke you. But when you, when you speak against the Holy Spirit, he gets hurt, wounded. So Ephesians Chapter 4, verses 30 to 31 says this. Let me read this to you from the Amplified. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offend or vex or sadden him. By whom you were sealed, marked, branded as God's own, secured for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, watch this. If you're a bitter person, if you're an unforgiving person, you are someone who grieves the Holy Spirit. Your bitterness turns heaven against you because bitterness grieves the Holy Spirit. Unforgiveness grieves the Holy Spirit. So let all bitterness, indignation, wrath, passion, rage, bad temper, anger, resentment, animosity, all these things and quarreling, brawling, clamor, contention, and slander, I spoke about gossiping, evil speaking, abusive, blasphemous language, using vulgar language, all this stuff, grieves the Holy Spirit. When you are bitter, when you are angry, you have a temper issue and you keep losing your temper every time, you, you resent people, you're always fighting, you're quarreling with people, you're slandering, you're speaking evil of this person, evil of that person, you're gossiping, you're abusive, or you use vulgar language, abusive language. And, and you know, whether you send a, a cell phone message or whether you speak from your mouth, when you do that, you grieve the Holy Spirit. There's it right here, Ephesians 4, 30 to 31. God says that when you do these things, you grieve the Holy Spirit. There is in, in Scripture what's called the unpardonable sin. And in, in later teachings on the series, on, on this program, we'll discuss that in greater detail. That requires a lot of, of, of knowledge and going back into the Word. And we'll discuss the unpardonable sin. But right now, if God tells you to do something and you keep resisting it, you, you will grieve the Holy Spirit. And grieving the Holy Spirit is not a place you want to be in. It's not a place you want to be in. In my life, 
in my life. I've been a believer for well over 30 years. There's only once, only once in my life where I literally did something that grieved the Holy Spirit. And I thought I was justified in doing it, but I grieved the Holy Spirit. Guess what he did? He refused to turn up in the meeting. I tried everything. I sang every song. I, I, <laughs> I did everything I know to bring his presence, to bring in the glory, to bring in the anointing. He refused to turn up. Why? Because I wounded him. And I repented of it. I've never done it since. So this is why we always do what the Holy Spirit wants. Let me say it again. We always do what God wants, not what we want. So suppose as a pastor, I run my church this way. I say, listen, what do the people want? Well, the people want short services to teach them the word like little children. The people want contemporary music that addresses also the different cultures. So I must please each culture and sing their song. The people want messages that motivate them, that encourage them, that will help them to make more money. More money. So as a pastor, I say, this is what the people want. Now, if I give the people what they want, I grieve the Holy Spirit. I grieve the Holy Spirit. It's like Aaron. Aaron was at the bottom of the mountain and the people said, we want a God. And guess who made the God? Guess who did the design of the God? It was Aaron. He gave the people what they want to appease them. And that is what we say is grieving the Holy Spirit. You grieve the Holy Spirit when you are a people pleaser. You run your meetings because you want to please different groups of people, because you want to please different cultures. You run your meeting because you want to please the church. And that grieves the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't go to meetings like that. He doesn't attend those churches. A lot of people can attend those churches, but the Holy Spirit doesn't attend those churches. Don't get excited because a lot of people go there. You know, a lot of people also go to the funeral. So don't get excited when you see crowds. Ask God to lead you. Go to an environment where the presence of God is tangible. It's real. You see the power of God. Even if you're struggling with the presence of God, but you see the power of God falling down. You see miracles taking place. That is an environment where the Holy Spirit is. He goes to that church. So shouldn't you also be in that environment where the supernatural is present? And, and I'm not putting down any pastor. I'm not putting down any church. I'm just talking about grieving the Holy Spirit. So often as Christians, we just grieve the Holy Spirit. We grieve Him and we don't even realize it. I mean, who would want to go to a birthday party and the birthday boy is not there? I wouldn't want to. I want to go where God is. Otherwise, quite frankly, I have wasted my Sunday. I want to be where the Spirit of God is. And there are so many churches all over the world, all over even our country and all over the world, where the Spirit of God is alive and active. There'll definitely be one in your area. There will definitely be one in your area and you can find it. You, keep, you, you can go visit church to church, pray and say, God, lead me to the right place. But find a place where the Holy Spirit is. And if you're in a place where you're so isolated and there's no churches anywhere near, you can't get to a church, you can join our online church. It's free. You can join our global church. You can stream our entire church service on a Sunday, on a Wednesday night for free. Be part of the service. You can even become a member of the church and so on. Now, the important thing is, be in that environment that does not grieve the Holy Spirit. That does not grieve the Holy Spirit. It's so important to be in that environment. Be in a God-pleasing environment. Be what we call a God-pleaser. Not a man-pleaser, a God-pleaser. What does the Holy Spirit want? People ask me, how is it? In every service you have, the supernatural turns up. Miracles happen in every single service. How is that possible? You know, because people are used to this Holy Spirit meetings. That's nonsense. There's no such thing as a Holy Spirit meeting. Every meeting has the Holy Spirit. Every meeting has miracles. Well, the reason that happens, because we create the environment for the Holy Spirit to be part of that church service. We make him feel welcome. We then tell him, take the best seat. What would you like us to sing for you? What worship songs would you like us to worship you with? And, and what would you like to do? 
What's your plans for the meeting today? We are here to submit to you. We're here to surrender to you and, and let your will be done. Let your will be done. You, I know you, when you come into these meetings, you've got great plans. There's people, you know what they're going through. You want to touch them. You know somebody needs healing. You want to heal them. Somebody needs deliverance. You want to deliver them. A marriage needs to be restored. You want to restore that marriage. So you want me to preach what will restore that marriage. Or you, you want me to, to call out a certain person, lay hands on someone. Uh, uh, you want me to prophesy over someone. Whatever it is you want me to do, I will do it. When you have that environment in your home, in your quiet time, in your ministry, when you have that environment, the Holy Spirit will not leave you. He'll not leave your dwelling place. You won't have seasons of the anointing, seasons of breakthrough. The Holy Spirit will be there every time you get together and he'll be tangible and real. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. The next thing about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit gives joy. He gives joy. Whenever he turns up, one of the things that will always happen in a service is joy. There is joy that causes excessive joy, that causes people to get drunk. That can happen. But there's joy when he turns up. You know, when, when, when I pray for somebody and the Holy Spirit turns up, you, if you watched me on, on our program or you watched me at church, you will notice that I get filled with joy. And I get so excited and I go, yes, or I scream. That is because the joy fills me as God does a miracle. And, and it's an environment of the Holy Spirit. You can't get depression if the Holy Spirit is there. If there's depression, depression is a sign of demonic activity. Whoa, let me say it again to someone out there. If there's depression, it's a sign of demonic activity. You can't get depressed if the Holy Spirit is present. You can come into the meeting with depression, but you'll get delivered because the Holy Spirit is there. But you can't go to church and stay in God's presence and have the Holy Spirit and be depressed. And you know, some people say, well, there's spiritual depression, clinical depression. Bad depression is demonic. Depression is demonic. It's a demon that needs to be cast out. Cast out that devil. Don't entertain it. Curse it. Don't nurse it. Curse it. Don't nurse it. Now, Luke 10, 21 says, At that time, Jesus, full of joy. Man, Jesus was full of joy. How? Through the Holy Spirit. So even Jesus went, <laughs> he got excited. He was full of joy. Through the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned it and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. He was full of joy while he spoke, while he preached the gospel. 1 Thessalonians 1, 6 says, You became imitators of us and of the Lord in spite of severe suffering. You welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. So when the gospel is preached, when the word is preached, there is an ingredient that comes with the word. It's called joy. The Holy Spirit takes the message that is preached from a pulpit, that's preached through, through the airways. He takes the message and he adds joy to that message. So whenever you receive the gospel, you don't go, oh, oh, that's okay. Oh, interesting word. No, when the message hits you, if you are in sin, it convicts you and joy fills you. But the message always comes with joy. It comes with joy, with joy, with joy. So even as I'm preaching right now, you are hearing the word, but at the same time, I'm releasing that anointing for joy because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. So the Holy Spirit is giving life to, the, to what I'm preaching. And the life is giving is the life of joy. Joy is entering your heart. And you say, wow, I love that revelation. Wow, I'm, I'm learning something here. Wow, <laughs> give me more, Lord, give me more. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I want some more. That is the joy that fills you right now. Now, the Holy Spirit is a person. And you can know the Holy Spirit. You can know him. 
right here on the program, all you need to do is you need to say, Holy Spirit, I want to know you. Let's do that right now. I want you to stretch forth your hands. And I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to teach you different parts. If you send me a message on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on my website, you email us in the office at silverbody.com or you, on social media, you send me a message, you say, Pastor, I love this teaching of the Holy Spirit so much. Can you give me more? If I get that response from you, then next week, I'm going to continue the series on the Holy Spirit. Amen. But it, I, I need to see at least over 500 messages coming in. Over 500 messages coming in and saying to me, we want to know more about the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you send me that message and, and tell me how much you're enjoying it, I will continue the series. Now, I want you to, to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Just like I've been having an encounter for the last 30 plus years. I still can't get enough. I still can't get enough. There's still so much to him. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to lay hands on your screen, whether it's your TV screen, computer screen, your cell phone screen. And I want you to put your other hand on your heart. And I want you to pray this with me right now. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I'm going to invite you to know the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, this is not a salvation prayer. This is a prayer to know the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Let's pray. Wonderful, wonderful Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you. Repeat this after me. Say, dear Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are part of the Godhead. You are equal to the Father, equal to the Son. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that Jesus has sent you into my life. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you live inside me. Now, Holy Spirit, I want to know you more intimately. I want to know who you are. I want to know more about Jesus. And I know that you will teach me. Holy Spirit, I want to know the mysteries of heaven. Pray it. Holy Spirit, I want to have an encounter with you right now. I want your presence to fill me. Holy Spirit, it must not be a one-time experience. I want this experience every minute every day. I want to know you in a way I've never known you before. Holy Spirit, I want to have an encounter right now. Now, as you, as you got your head stretched towards the screen and you prayed that prayer, I pray for you right now. Wonderful Holy Spirit, my best friend, I love you so much. Nothing in the world means more to me than you. Right now, I ask that every person that is watching this broadcast be filled with your mighty presence. Let them have an encounter. Reveal yourself to them in Jesus' name. Kura baba ba shitara baba baba satara baba ba hande. Kuri raba soto robo shitara ba hande. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God's power is coming into you right now. It's hitting you right now. Father, I thank you for revelation of what we'll be teaching. I thank you, Father, that tonight people will have dreams. People will start to say, good night, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. People will, will, will want to know more and more about you. Every time people read the Bible, they'll say, Holy Spirit, teach me the word of God. Every time they go into a meeting, they'll say, Holy Spirit, guide me, lead me. Holy Spirit, show me what to do. And they'll wait for you to lead them. I thank you people will have more and more intimate relationship with you. They will make time to spend with you to get to know you. I thank you that people will get on their knees and say, Holy Spirit, who are you? Reveal yourself to me. Show yourself to me. I want to know you intimately. I want to know you intimately. I thank you, Father, that you right now are touching people. You're revealing yourself to people. After this broadcast is over, your presence will remain in that person's life. Wherever they are, your presence will remain on them right now. I thank you, Jesus. People are having encounters all over the world that's watching this broadcast right now. In Jesus' name. Kiraba shataraba kasate. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Man, some of you feel like heat all over your body. 
That's the Holy Spirit wrapping himself around you. Some of you, your body is shaking. That's the Holy Spirit all over you. Some of you are weeping right now. That's the Holy Spirit. Some of you are on the floor crying. That's the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter what emotion you hit or whether you don't hit any major emotions. The Holy Spirit is there right now. And listen, tell him, don't leave Holy Spirit. Don't leave Holy Spirit. Stay, stay Holy Spirit. It's not enough, I want more of you. It's not enough, I want more of you. Put a demand on him to remain. Put a demand on him to stay with you. And as you keep doing that, he won't leave you. He won't leave you. He will continue to stay there in your room. He'll continue to stay there with you. He will not leave you. Hallelujah. 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 He is there. Woo. Rabba shaka rabba hande. People are getting drunk all over the place. I can just see it in the spirit right now. As you're watching this program, you're getting drunk. People are laughing, rolling on the floor. Please send me your testimonies. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please share your testimony with me. I want to know what God has done with you today on the program. I want to know how God has touched your life. Tell me how he came into your room. And, and, and tomorrow, I'll continue talking about how to sustain his presence. And if you want me to go deeper into this, you got to send me a message. Pastor, please go deeper into this message. I love you. And thank you for watching this program. Thank you for partnering with us and being part of our, this family. Remember, when you sow into this ministry, you draw the supernatural from this ministry into your life, into your ministry. Right now, go to our website. Go to our website. It says this online giving and sow a seed and draw this grace that's on our ministry into your lives. We love you. God bless you. Goodbye.